Okay, we're here uh, looking at a beautiful collection of Glen Fix Scotch whiskeys, and we're with the uh, brand ambassador David Allardyce, who's here, uh, a Scottish man originally, but now living in the U.S. Welcome. Correct. Thank you very much, Wes. So uh, you've just been educating me wonderfully about uh, about these uh, whiskeys, but why don't you give the the readers a few. Uh, a few tips that only the pros know about, some things that uh, are important for people to understand about your whiskey and actually the whiskies of Scotland. Well, first of all, um, if you want to know a little bit more about how to pronounce Glenfiddich properly, yeah. uh -huh. you, can, you can start by remembering uh, the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah. So it's not Glenfiddich, it's Glenfiddich. Okay. Uh, just an old Scots Gaelic pronunciation there. Uh, and what, what we have at Glenfiddich is only single malt Scotch whisky, and that just means that the whisky comes from only one single distillery, Glenfiddich Distillery, and the whisky itself is made from malted barley only. It's the only grain we use. And how much do you uh, do you use peat in your whisky? We use uh, a, a tiny amount of peat these days. What we do is we 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 have a barley that we buy in at a specific level of. Uh, specific phenol level uh -huh. so it's almost untraceable the phenol level is going to be what tell uh, parts per million it's going to tell you how peaty and smoky your barley is uh, we prefer not to use that style of whiskey i think that even though i, I, I do like period scotches i think when you have a, a style like glenfiddich's you have more opportunity to impart different flavor characteristics by using different variations of casks and so you know when we go through this range here We've got 15, 18, brand new malt masters edition, 21 year old rum finish, and this something special here, the vintage 74. You'll, you'll be able to see not just a progression in years and uh, different cask styles, but you'll you definitely get more flavour profiles and different uh, different whiskies with different directions on the palate. It's, it's, it's quite interesting. And and your whiskey is. Uh you're the least expensive is a 12 year old, right? That runs around $35? Yeah, Scotch whiskey has to be aged for at least three years, but at Glenfiddich, the youngest whiskey we produce is a 12 year old. Mm -hmm. uh, that is our best selling single malt for obvious reasons. Uh, but today we're just going to sample from 15 upwards. But I was going to tell the, uh, the, the our readers that. Uh, the, the prices of your whiskey actually can climb to pretty dramatic uh, levels. Absolutely. Uh, you were telling me about one that was uh, auctioned off recently for how much? Yeah, it was uh, the 55 year old Janet Sheed Roberts Reserve that was to commemorate William Grant's uh, last remaining grandchild. Um, and she sadly passed away earlier this year, but she was 110 years old. So we <laughs> From came, drinking whiskey, right? That would be a good <laughs> indication of the water of life and yeah. what it can do for you. Yeah. Uh, and, and we created this 55 year old bottle. 11 bottles went to auction, all the proceeds go to charity. And uh, earlier this year we had uh, the auction at the Statue of Liberty and it went for $96,000. Luckily for the winner, uh, he actually the bottle came with a miniature. <laughs> so he could take it home, polish it off, put it on his mantelpiece, but also sample the, the liquid in there. So that was quite good. But yeah, the, the prices can get pretty steep. It's quite a collectible item these days. Yeah. Um, but for the people that are looking for best bang for buck, We've got a couple of options here, okay. and, and particularly the 15-year-old is what we're going to start now, let with. Let me see that label here. Turn it around a little bit. There we go. So this is uh, the Solera VAT system that we use. We we take a combination. Of now, I know what Solera is, but uh, most people probably don't. Right. So you want you want to tell them about that? Yeah, we, we take a combination of three different types of casks. Uh, we take a portion of uh, used bourbon barrels. We use some sherry casks, and we also use a, a, a small portion of brand new virgin oak. Mm -hmm. And we combine the uh, percentage of these casts together in what's known as the Solera Vat, created in 1999 by David Stewart at the distillery. It's the only thing, um, it's the only maturation process like it in the, in the industry. And what happens is it's kind of similar to the sherry uh, in right. industry where you add a little bit of new whiskey, right. you take a bit out, it's mm -hmm. never more than half emptied. Mm -hmm. And so obviously since 1999 we've been adding 15 year old Scotch whiskey there. Uh, and, and we only take a portion out each time, so a lot of the whiskey in this bottle is actually going to be a lot older than 15 years. Right. However, this is uh, one of the, the favorite whiskies for the people at the distillery. That means there's a little trace of whiskey from 84 in there, right? There, there very well could be. Yeah. But the, the number on the bottle here indicates 15, the youngest yeah. drop of whiskey in uh -huh. the bottle. We can't trick the consumers by putting uh, filling it up to here with 12 year old and then putting a little bit of 15 uh, year old right. in there. It has to be the youngest drop of whiskey in the glass. Okay. So this is a um, 
very very sweet uh, nice and honeyed got the typical vanilla characteristics that you get from a bourbon cask but uh, like I said it does very well for us and it's it's pretty pretty easy to call this your go-to scotch if you're a glyphosate. And, and when you say sweet uh, it's not actually sugary but no. it's got an aroma that's kind of butterscotch and vanilla and cream yeah, and that yeah. kind of Yeah, when you talk about um, sweet scotches typically you, um, you know about 90% 90, 90 of the, the single malt scotch out there is aged in a bourbon barrel and you're getting a lot of uh, vanilla notes and, and somewhat of uh, honey especially in the 15 year old mm -hmm. and uh, you can definitely taste that here and if, and if you like something with a bit more complexity this actually ticks all the boxes in, in, in terms of complexity, richness, sweetness uh, and it's, it's, it's a whiskey that can bring in new whiskey drinkers or somebody with a, a new palate to whiskey or a younger palate uh -huh. but also satisfy uh, the more seasoned whiskey drinker like yourself. <laughs> and would you drink this uh, neat or uh, would you drink it in a, in a cocktail? I would absolutely drink it in a cocktail. Uh, an old fashioned with Glen 15 is tremendous. Uh, I drink most of my whiskey neat, sometimes a few drops of water, and maybe a cube of ice here and there, but very rarely. Okay. I mean, we do live in Texas where it's pretty warm, so yeah. sometimes you, you just want to cool it down a little bit, but you lose a lot of flavour when you add ice, so if you're looking to get the most flavour out of your Scotch whiskey, which typically that's why you're drinking it, to get a lot of flavours on your uh -huh. palate, you don't want to add too much ice in there. Well, we're going to take a taste of this and then we'll be back and talk more about the whiskies of Glenfiddich. So we've just had an opportunity to taste through the first four of these whiskies. So, so we had the 15 year old, the 18 year old, then the Malt Master Edition, and then the 21 year old, which is finished in oak. And just, I was asking myself, when I'm finished in, uh, I'm sorry, rum. in rum. rum. I was asking myself, so why don't you give people an idea what it means when you say finished in rum or finished in sherry or finished in bourbon? What, what when you're talking you about? about finishing a uh, Scotch whiskey, you're talking about putting a, 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 taking a barrel of whiskey and then transferring it into a different type of barrel. Uh -huh. So for example, 21 year old, we start off uh, with a combination of bourbon and sherry casks uh -huh. and then we finish it off in a rum cask. Uh, the difference is with the 21 year old is we don't buy the rum cask, we buy the rum. Uh -huh. We put the rum into our casks, we season the casks for about two years. We then take the rum back out, sell it back and then put our Glenfiddich 21 into those casks for about six months and you just get extra layers of complexity, nice sweetness from the rum. Well, and I can, I can attest to that, you really do. And I, I think the, the, the great job that's been done here is the fact that it's maintained the whiskey flavour, uh -huh. Scotch whiskey flavour, with a rum sort of uh, dimension to it. Right. As opposed to some other rum finishes that I've tasted out there, uh, taste almost more like a rum with a, a uh -huh. Scotch whiskey right. finish to it. It's, Done with that, yeah. it's been overpowered, but this has been really well balanced, the, the way it's been made, it's been expertly done. And going so, backwards, the, uh, going back, the one that the one that really, really grabbed my attention. And this is the brand new Malt Masters edition. Uh, just came out in the States uh, last month. Hit the shelves in Texas just a few weeks ago. This is a double maturation process. Double maturation is slightly different from finishing in the sense that you start off in one type of cask and then you transfer it to another type of cask. But instead of leaving it just for a finishing period of a few months, you actually leave it there for another period of maturation for years. Right. Excuse me. So what we've got with the Malt Masters edition is traditional bourbon oak casks for between six and eight years. And we fully transfer that liquid into sherry casks for between four and six years. And what you get at the end, uh, as you tasted, was something that has a real nice vanilla influence from the bourbon cask, but also has that uh, rich fruit dimension, that, that's, that flavor profile that you get from a, a European oak, sherry oak. And the only bad thing about this whiskey is that it's limited, because yeah. it's such a good, uh, it's such a good spirit. How much? How much does that one cost? This is going to be running about eighty dollars. I, I want to tell you that was that was one of the the most beautiful Scotch whiskeys I've ever tasted. It's uh, it's just got such a, an interesting uh, 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 aromas to it. But the thing you and I were talking about that I think is so important on whiskey, maybe you can mention a little bit about it, is is the viscosity of it, the way it feels in your mouth. 
um, you know, the best whiskeys tend to feel, uh, I don't want to say oily, but perhaps creamy yeah. uh, in that's, your mouth, as opposed good, to just like watery. It's a good way of putting it. Creamy is uh, sometimes you'll describe the, the mouth feel, as we call it, mm -hmm. as being creamy or buttery. Um, you don't, you don't tend to want your whiskey to be thin. Right. You want it to sit on your tongue. You want it to, to really excite your palate. You don't want it just to come and go and disappear, and, and there's no finish to it. Uh, when you have a nice viscosity to your whiskey, that you can you can chew on it a little bit, you can enjoy it more, and it's, it's just the mark of a, a good quality Scotch whiskey. And mm -hmm. uh, something that you get with this Malt Masters edition is a very interesting mouthfeel to it. It almost feels. Um, Slightly sugary, yeah, honey like a little but bit, but there's no sugar added. Yeah. I mean, all it is is uh, water, yeast, and barley, right? And all the flavor you're getting, or, or the majority of the flavor is coming from the cask, so it's just it's just it's all about the craft and, and how you create that flavor profile using these different casks that, yeah. that gets you to the final product. There, well, I, I loved that. That one was really good. How about the 18 now? The 18 is now the 18, uh, as I mentioned, was uh, like that, it's married in the small batches. Uh, it's using a combination of bourbon and sherry casks, mm -hmm. and this is our most awarded single malt out of the, the line that we have. Really? This this does best for us in all the blind taste tests that we do. Uh huh. And slightly higher alcohol content, 43%. You can't notice it. It's such a rounded off whiskey. It's very mellow, but at the same time has a lot of complexity, rich flavour, satisfies the most advanced Scotch whiskey palates. Uh, great for eating with steak, uh, smoking with cigars. I, I think it'd be a wonderful as a gift. I mean, this, uh, this you know, both of those last two would be great gift scotches, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and Christmas coming up and everything. Exactly, perfect timing. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the 21 year old, um, we talked about that, it's a great gift option. It came in a, a new, brand new packaging, it looks fantastic on the shelf, but it's really about um, who you buy the gift for. Sure. Don't just buy them the oldest, most expensive, just because, right, right. although that's fantastic. But yeah. Think about what's in the, the bottle, how has it been aged, what kind of flavor profile, who are you buying it for, do they prefer something sweet, uh -huh. malt master, do they prefer something a little bit more robust, uh -huh. 18 year old, so it's, it's good to know a little bit about the flavor profile instead of just judging it by years. Uh, the, the years on the, the bottle tells you how old it is, doesn't necessarily tell you how good it is. Yeah, well in a, in a minute we're gonna taste something very old and very rare, but we will come back to that. Okay, David, so we got uh, a special, special pour coming along, right? Tell That's us right. a little bit about it. This right here is what we call the Glenfiddich Vintage 74. Uh, we came out with this 2011, and usually what we do with the vintages is we select a, a specific cask from the warehouse, mm -hmm. and we bottle just that one cask. This one was actually selected by uh, our brand ambassadors from around the world, including our global brand ambassador Ian Miller. And the guys went back to the the guys and girls went back to the distillery and they selected three casks this time: uh, 73, 74, and a 75. Mm -hmm. And it was the first ever vatting of three or more than one cask for a Glenfiddich vintage. Pretty rare. Uh, I think we've more than pretty rare. Pretty rare. I mean, for, for example, this year we got. Uh, I think we've got three bottles in Texas. <laughs> and and for the lucky soul who can find one to buy, roughly what are we talking about? Around about seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars, pal. Woo! Yeah. Um, so you're looking at a very rare product, but what's more important is the the flavor profile in this glass. We've tasted a good range of different flavors. Mm -hmm. This is going to be something. Well, let's let's both take a, a sniff and you tell me what you right. get. Oh my. So there's a, there's definitely a lot of fruit in here and I think something that's unusual about this particular whiskey is that it's more of a tropical fruit. Mm -hmm. And you'll get this especially on the palate. You mean like pineapples and mangoes? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can get that. And then it has uh, coming through on, on the back end when you when you nose it, it's got a warm sort of like uh, spice. Mm -hmm. Cinnamon's a, a typical thing, but it's uh, it's hard to get a, a good nose when when you're sitting outside. Sitting outside, we're class. in a beautiful place here. However, yeah. we can certainly taste it. Yeah. Now the uh, 
for people who don't know the exact term, there's a term called retronasal, which means uh, once you swallow it, you still get aromas from it. And this has enormous, huge, enormous keeps aromas going. like that. Yeah, keeps going and going, makes your mouth water. Yeah, take it in your on your palate at first. Very pleasant. It's got a good mouth feel. It's got those tropical fruits, a little bit of spice. It has. Um, I mean, it really brings out the food that we've just eaten here. Mm -hmm. Some of that, that that spicy corn that we had. Yeah, we just finished uh, steaks and corn and potatoes and a little guacamole. It really complements that yeah. corn. It's yeah. not something that I've tried with my Scotch whiskey before, but uh -huh. that re worked really well. That sort of, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know if there's some sort of chipotle sauce on there. Yeah, or it's like grilled that. corn with chipotle on it, yeah. Fantastic, but yeah, this is uh, something you could just swirl around your mouth and you don't actually want to swallow it. Mm -hmm. So much going on, and and once you get past the fact that you know it's such a rare product, you can you can really just enjoy the liquid. So you, uh, I noticed, didn't put any water in yours. Is uh, I'm gonna put just a little yeah, little this, splash this is, in mine. This mind. is bottled at 46.8 percent. Yeah, ABV. So we're looking at a, a little bit higher alcohol content than uh, the previous whiskies we tried today. But a little bit of water should definitely bring a lot more out here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh that's good. You know, it's it's just amazing. Uh, of course, you know your uh, your company's been doing this for a while, but but it's it's amazing to think of how little of the smoky, peaty kind of uh, uh, aromas have uh, have gone on. I guess. I mean, do you, use, do you all cook uh, or smoke with peat at all? I mean, use peat for fuel at all? No, what we do is um, the barley that we, we choose is, uh -huh. is, is, like I said before, is, is a very, very low phenol content. Right. Uh, back in the day, everyone was making peat and scotches. Yeah. Everyone was using peat as their fuel source. Right. And uh, now we can be more selective and, and you know decide that we want that flavor profile in our right. scotch or do right. we want to go a different route and, and remove the peat altogether. So pretty much we removed the peat aspect. Uh, we're bringing out, or we brought out already for travel retail, uh, a new Glenfiddich uh, 125th anniversary bottling, which is in, uh, pretty sure it's in Heathrow Airport. So yeah. next time I have a friend flying over from the UK, I'll ask them to go through Heathrow and pick <laughs> up the bottle. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we're celebrating 125 years of Glenfiddich this year, and that was one of the, the limited bottlings that came out in addition to the Maltmas edition. It's a peated version of uh, Glenfiddich, so haven't yet tried it myself, but I'm looking forward to right. um, just waiting for my friends to come over at Christmas. Bring it to you. So are there any last words you have for the people of Austin? What do you want them to know about Glenfiddich? Anything else? I just think that uh, never underestimate um, a brand based on its popularity. Uh huh. Uh, I know some people will always say that the, the song in the charts that's number two is quite often better than the number one. Uh -huh. We've got the best selling single malt, but it's the most awarded single malt, and it's that way for a reason. Uh -huh. uh, I'm a Scotch lover, I do work for Glenfiddich, and I try other whiskies from time to time, or quite a lot, but we have a, a, an incredible array of flavour profiles. Yeah, so experiment. You do. Yeah. Get your hands on a malt master if you can. Um, it's quite limited, about a thousand bottles in Texas. It'll be a collector's item, so you might want to buy two if, yeah. you're, really, if you're really down that way of collecting. Well, you will because you want to drink one of them, I assure exactly. you. Yeah. Well, I'll definitely be drinking one of mine, um, yeah. but I have a spare just to, to keep us back up. Yeah. But yeah, it was, um, it's a pleasure going through these scotches with you today. Great. Well, thank you so much, and uh, welcome to Austin. Thank you very much.